Time now for tonight's power panel. It's extra large. We've got a lot of great people, co-hosts of the five, right here on Fox News. Juan Williams, former press secretary for the Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, Rochelle Ritchie, and Fox News contributors Lawrence Jones and Katie Pavlich here with me in Washington. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Thanks, Rochelle, I want to start with you. I, I, it caught my eye, among other things, the Daily Caller tweeted out today, if you're a Virginia Democrat and you have not worn blackface, please contact us. What is going on with your party? You know, I think it's really unfortunate, Ed, but, you know, I think this leads to a bigger conversation. Obviously, when I saw the blackface and the Ku Klux Klan um, robe, I was very disturbed by it. But I think that this is a result of this country really not doing a better job at educating people on black history. And so I think that a lot of people have really become very insensitive and they've had insensitive conversations as far as uh, black history and what is offensive to black people in this country. And so because of the lack mm -hmm. of education when it comes to um, African-American history, there has not been this sort of, uh, we have not learned enough about black people. When you hear about black okay. history, you know, we were slaves, we were freed by Lincoln, civil rights, and then Obama became president. And so it seems like that is pretty that much how it wide quickly. it goes. And yeah. so I think that we really need to do a better job at educating people so that these kind of things do not happen in the future. Okay. Well, I want to bring in Katie, though, because you make a fair point. But on the other hand, Katie, have a Democrat's made this worse instead of better perhaps by like some of the ads that ran in the Virginia governor's race that accused Ed Gillespie, the Republican, and President Trump of being racist yeah. and a guy in a pickup truck with a Confederate flag trying to run down minority kids. Yep. How did that help the conversation about black kids? Well, look, I do think that there is an argument to be made about having real conversations without the judgment about people being ignorant about maybe some of the things. But in Virginia, mm -hmm. uh, in the, the, the capital of the Confederacy, I don't think that Ralph Northam um, or any of these other Democrats who are now admitting they were, and then, you know, saying that they're not admitting to it, as Northam has, um, are necessarily deserve the benefit of the doubt when it comes to what was offensive. But when it comes to the double standard here, you know, Ralph Northam ran, or people on his behalf, and he refused to condemn, mm -hmm. um, ads against Republicans accusing them of racism falsely. The left in this situation has set themselves up about whether they want to follow the new rules that they have yeah. set in terms of identity politics and using race as a weapon. I think that there's room for forgiveness here. I think that you can look at it from a perspective of they've all apologized, maybe with the exception of Ralph Northam, because he sure. admitted it and, and then essentially lied about it. Um, but that has to go on both sides. Sure. And the left can't continue to falsely accuse Republicans of racism to shut down debate um, and to win an argument with that sure. and, and rather than having us move forward with Fair points. So let's bring in Juan because, Juan, uh, you and I have had long dinners and talked about race and other serious uh, subjects, and we should have a serious conversation about this, not just a food fight. When you hear the points being made by Katie and Rochelle, what goes through your mind? Well, one, I think this is, you know, clearly beyond sensitivities of black people. I think that there's a long history of blackface being used to demean to dehumanize black Americans, and it goes back, you know, it's even before the Civil War, but certainly afterwards, the whole minstrel ideology. Uh, the second thing I would say here is I'm listening to Katie. I think, you know, there's a lot of sense on the Republican side of, oh, you guys have stepped in the mess that you made in terms of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And so I guess there's a little bit of schadenfreude in saying, oh, you're, you're suffering from this issue now. To me, it's a little bigger. I think that for Democrats right now to deal with someone like Ralph Northam, you have to understand, as Katie said, he has changed his position on this. He has sacrificed all moral authority by first saying, oh, uh, that's not me, and, or, or, yeah, apologizing, and then sure. su subsequently saying, that's not me. At this point, the argument is, oh, if he gets out, it will mark him as a racist former governor for uh -huh. life, rather than dealing with the real issue, which is his need to apologize, to right. deal with moral authority, and the fact that he's damaging the Democrats nationally in the era of Trump when there's lots of accusations about racism, misogyny. Well, now the Democrats look Lawrence like in. they're just open to charges of hypocrisy. All right, I gave Juan a lot of time, Lawrence. You said bingo. Juan? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe Juan. this hell is frozen <laughs> over. Uh, I, I agree with my brother, Juan, uh, and this is why I've been telling Republicans to calm down. Allow them to keep these people in office because we know what's going to happen uh, in 2020. They're going to be accusing Donald Trump of racism, say the Republicans are racist, just like they do in a, every other election. The Democrats started this whole mob mentality of calling people out and, and, and not allowing due process to happen. And so now you 
have to deal with the, the people that are in your party. And this is what I've <laughs> always told people from the very beginning. There is no party that owns racism. There's going to be people right. in every right. single party mm -hmm. that is going to do things that we don't like, and we should all call them out. The problem is with Democrats, if they, they've tried to say it's just the Republicans. Right. It's only the Republicans that are right. And they use it during every single election. And now it's coming to bite their tail. Well, and they've done, Go they've ahead. made that accusation without evidence as a way to not have deeper discussions mm -hmm. about the way that policies affect. They just throw around every, the word, you're a racist. They throw it away to stop, they throw it out there to stop debate, right? rather than having, quote, a real conversation about the issue. And the problem in Virginia mm -hmm. is they have repeatedly accused Republicans with zero evidence of racism, and they themselves have very clear evidence of hey. racism, sure. whether sure. it was Rochelle, now or 30 years you've ago. You've been patient, Rochelle. Go ahead. Ed, th this is the problem that I have with this. See, racism is defined differently by people. So because we saw Northam in black in a black face or in possibly a Ku Klux Klan uh, robe, we've been able to see evidence of racism because mm -hmm. of something we've seen. There are, there are times where your rhetoric can also be racist. And it's unfortunate that in this country, unless you're in blackface, unless you're in a Ku Klux Klan uh, robe, and unless you use the N-word, you can escape being considered a Races because okay. it's not that clear evidence that I think people want to see when someone is labeled racist. Okay, let me turn the conversation now to an, another thing that was alluded to about due process, which is another serious issue. Me Too uh, and all the rest. Uh, Juan, uh, when I see what's developed tonight with Congressman Bobby Scott, I wonder in the case of Brett Kavanaugh, you had Dianne Feinstein sit on an allegation of sexual assault for months. Republicans said it was because she was holding it for maximum political benefit. She said it couldn't be corroborated. We we can debate that. Now you move forward to this one with the lieutenant governor who's a Democrat in Virginia. It turns out a Democratic congressman, Bobby Scott, knew about this a year ago. Why didn't he come forward? If Democrats are saying, believe all women, why didn't he come forward? Uh, according to Bobby Scott, he didn't realize that there was sexual assault involved. But he adm admitted today that he knew the woman had come to him and he was fully aware of it. And so subsequent to that, I think, you know, kind of Monday morning quarterbacking it, I think everybody would say you should have acted. Now, in the case, the other case, by the way, that woman in the Kavanaugh case did, had gone to a mm -hmm. congresswoman in California, and she was the one who sat on it before then forwarding it uh, to the senator in the sure, course of the judiciary. Sure, but then find someone a top Democrat on judiciary. Correct. Done so that's sooner. a different dynamic. Okay. And I would also add a different dynamic in terms of the Washington Post knowing about uh, the case involving uh, this woman who's making the charges against Lieutenant Fairfax. Governor Fairfax. There was no really investigation of the woman okay. in the Kavanaugh Real case. All right, J Lawrence and Katie, quickly make your points. Well, I think the bottom line is this, that it seems like the Democrats, when, when it comes to the, their guys, they want due process. They want the facts to come out. They want a little bit of grace until uh, they've worked so hard for women or worked so hard for civil rights. But when it happens to people that are on the right, they rush the judgment. They're quick to go to the press. And I'll say this, sure. too. The press was so, uh, when it came to Kavanaugh, they wanted investigative reporting. There must be other women. They're not doing the same thing in this situation. So Katie. this shows you the hypocrisy. I would just show you that this is the dangers of identity politics and using things like sexual assault in a political way because instead of judging people based on the facts and going through due process, we're having this conversation in the public arena where we don't know all the facts. We are just going based off of accusations from either side. You shouldn't believe someone as a woman any more than you believe them as a man. You should believe them based on what the evidence shows because in America, that's the way that people can get justice. Okay. When you start lumping in, we're going to believe so-and-so over so-and-so based yeah. on gender or race, uh, then yeah. it really conflates. Rochelle, I'll give you the final word. Uh, really quickly, yes. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that we should certainly be using sexual assault victims as, as political mm -hmm. pawns. And I think we saw that with Dr. Ford. And I think we're seeing that now with this woman okay. that is accusing L Lieutenant Governor Fairfax. Okay. Serious issues to tackle. We appreciate uh, this intelligence conversation tonight. Juan, Rochelle, Lawrence, Katie, Thank all you. great stuff. Appreciate it.